<laughs> Matt Matt's unavailable. He had to attend to his family. So that sounds a, really bad. Yeah. It's he not. I checked in on him. He's family? okay. Everything's okay. <clears throat> there was I don't mean yeah. it seems, sounds bad like medically. It sounds like, you know, fight. No, there was no fight. Just so we're clear. <sighs> Let's start, dude. Let's start where we left off. We're going right into it. Because we gotta plow through these guys because they kind of suck. Yeah, some of these guys I'm not interested in at all. So just name them. So this is Rutherford B. Hayes. He ju- he destroyed. Uh, uh, he stopped um, reconstruction. I mean, he stopped yeah. the slave. He was the one helped who, the black people stuff. So the reason he did that is because he was losing to a guy named Tilden in the in the election. Yeah, South Carolina, Louisiana, and Florida were the three southern states that still hadn't counted in the electoral college. Yeah, the Republicans made a deal with the Democrats that said we'll remove federal troops from those states. If you give them to Hayes, and they did. This is after the Civil War is over. Yeah, still having this fucking. Well, that's because the KKK was. They were they were the real deal. They were fucking shit up. So they had the federal troops down there, which actually kind of helped the Republicans get votes because the black people were allowed to vote at this point. They had the troops down there protecting them to get their votes, and obviously, that's 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 what the guy said when cynically when when the guy pitched the first guy pitched the name Ku Klux Klan. The leader was K. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he liked That's it. A bad joke. No, yeah, right. but it took him. He had to warm up to it. Okay. 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 Um, Republicans removed it. Basically, he ended Reconstruction. Hayes didn't do much, but this is where this is actually important because this is kind of the end of it. Lowered presidential power quite a bit. These guys mm-hmm. kind of took a back step to Carnegie, Rockefeller. This is the rise of these capitalists. Yeah, monsters. like now with the yeah. tech guys, and we're the, still in. with the Bezos and yep. the uh, and the Ma- Elon Musk. Elon Musk, I'm sick. Of oh him. my god! What are you gonna do if he bought? If he, well, he bought it, right? He bought Twitter. You guys, what are you gonna do? He bought Twitter from those really great people that owned it. <laughs> like now, it's not gonna be democracy because the people I like the yeah, people yeah, yeah. before were like the like a bunch of monks or something. They were. Yeah, they're a bunch of monks like that just knew everything. Yeah. And now they, he took it and he's a piece of shit. Although I don't think Elon Musk. I don't think Trump's getting back on, which is the only thing I wanted. You don't know yet. You don't know. Who knows? Yeah. He Who could knows? be being coy. Which one? Trump? Or Trump. Trump. He could be like, maybe I'll come back. Maybe I'll come back. Maybe I won't. Uh, uh, so this is this is big for Hayes. 1877. When yeah, so those a, guys, the, the corporations started having more power than the federal yeah, government. As soon as they took Because the over. fucking uh, industrial north that plowed the south under and then it just became belching machines. Yeah. And uh, oil started. Yeah. And fuck it. It just, there was no, it was just steel, coal, oil. Yeah. Uh, what year are we at? This is 1877. Okay, so no cars or anything, but like, yeah, you close. know, really big horses <laughs> the horses got bigger <laughs> huge horses <laughs> they were uh, like 10 feet wide horses then when hayes took over the Penn, trains Penn railroad cut employee pay by 20 percent. so right away fuckers they were amazon they right were away amazon they amazon sons out. of bitches so there was strikes yeah. and then hayes sent in federal troops to put down strikes so the government sided with the corporations obviously mm-hmm. and they used you know they went down and shot guys that were striking with Best. real troops. Did you ever see? Uh, <laughs> never mind. Do it. I'm right. Re- I'm just reacting to shit I don't know about. And That's by the fine. way, this is what when people get excited and like make pop yeah. off remarks like I've been the last two minutes, it's because they actually don't know what they're talking about. Well, we don't. Know I'm, what I'm only about. hearing about it from you. Yeah. This, but what a and good you're looking way at your phone. What a good so. way to put down a strike. Well, this is research I did, but that's all right. Yeah, it just uh, you sent in dudes uh, to beat the shit out of the guys, yeah. the strikers, <laughs> just open fire on them. On which uh, industries? The mostly coal? mostly railroad and coal. Yeah. Did you ever see Matawan? Mm-mm. It's a great movie by John Sayles. Nobody knows who he is anymore. Mm-mm. Eight Men Out about the White Sox, the Black Sox. No. You know. Oh, I know about it. Shoeless Joe. Mm. Yeah. So he made a movie called Meyer Matawan. Lansky. What? Meyer Lansky. The yes, Jews behind right. it. I mean, he might have been Jewish. <laughs> Meyer Lansky. Meyer I mean, Lansky. I'm not. He's not. I'm not going to say. <laughs> He didn't do it because he was Jewish. You think that's what Hitler he was, was mad Jewish about? He was Jewish because he did it. Was what? the World Series? That's what Hitler was mad about? I think that might have been what he was pissed about. About the, the Black Sox? Yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it 
1880. Matawan. So Matawan <laughs> yeah. is a movie about the coal mining strikes and these guys that are trying to make a union, right? And so there's a kid in it who's a preacher. It was a common thing back then in rural places that a child would be a preacher, like yeah. a touched child who just can really fucking rock. Sam Kinison was a preacher when he was a kid. No. Yes. Did you know that? No. Sam Kinison was a preacher before Jesus he was a comic. Christ. Yes. And he did it. Wait, 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 Lord, it was sounded exactly like his act. Talking about Jesus Christ. If you don't find Jesus Christ in your heart, you know, you're one of those guys. He does it in one of his specials. He flashes into it for a moment. Wow. And they cut to his mother in the audience like this. And, you know, <laughs> she, she loves she him as a comic. That. She loved him as a preacher. <laughs> but it's the same energy. Okay. So kid preachers. Um, like there will common. be blood. Huh? Fucking, yeah. Yeah, he, Paul Dano plays, he's not, I mean, younger than that. The kid's a teenager. Yeah. And he was the, the the spiritual leader of the town, this little Pennsylvania where you're from. Yeah. Town of coal miners. And there is some, so some guys start to organize to make a union. And the kid, the, the, the church is, which was common also, the church was in on the union. So they wanted to help the union. So the, uh, um, they are planning a walkout or a strike or something. So the company sent these two thugs, fucking, you know, guys with whiskey in their pocket uh, to go down there and go to the meeting to just eavesdrop on the plan. So they're yeah. sitting in the back of the of the church just waiting to hear what the plans are. And the kid doesn't want them to know what the plan is. So he tells a bi biblical parable. He tells a story from the Bible that clearly to anyone who knows the Bible says what time and when yeah. how they're going to do it i don't know the bible story but yeah, the guys it's, it's a great moment yeah. because the guys in the back don't hear it because they're heathens so they don't have any faith so the truth is right in front of them and they can't even hear it it's a great great that's moment. nice that's my only thing on rutherford b hayes <laughs> that's good though so that's what yeah back then it was like this wicked uh but it's important for it, it's the through line of america because once we were all kind of thrown into the same place, then it was this thing about the industrial rich, the, yeah. the enormity all over the world, too. In England also, with uh, Oliver Twist and whatever, and where Dick, when Dickens was writing, poor houses, work houses. That's how they did it over there. And here we had a horrible version of the same thing. Three-year-old kids working yeah. in mills. And uh, that against the, the impossibility of uh, capitalist structure. Uh, and and people trying to organize and that that union organization was not a sort of liberal ideal. It was the people. It was the working people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had to do it. They had to. They just needed leverage. That's yeah. all. They just needed capitalist leverage. They needed their part in the capitalist scheme that you yeah. had to, that you couldn't just get some other guys if these guys wouldn't do it for yeah, the price. Is this is 10, 12 years after the Civil War. That's right. Half of really these guys quickly. were veterans. Like, they had been through hell. Yes. And now they're coming home and they're like, actually, we're going to stop paying you guys as much because yes. we're getting richer. Every uh, class of veterans has come home to total confusion and having no worth <laughs> in the society that yeah. they protected. They get Every a parade, class of veterans has gotten fucked. They get a party. Fucked. Yeah. Like all the guys, the blacklisted guys in Hollywood, these were all war veterans. These were all war heroes who came home and saw the country in tatters and saw it, had some ideas about another system and they got thrown in prison for it. But yeah. anyway, whatever. But so, yes, they, um, so that, then, hey, and also we were pushing West. Yeah. So, so this cities is also like city, the cities, like the Northeast and places like Chicago were like churning out black smoke and industry. And in the West, people were still gunfighting. Yeah. <laughs> Folks Absolutely, were fighting each other with guns in the 1870s. It would have still been. It would have been the Indian towards the end of the Indian Wars. Yeah, I mean the the Comanche were still going wild. Like it was, and it was, was still all these American uh, professional soldiers. Yeah, who fought in the Civil War, and some of them went west to fight the Indian Wars. Yeah, and then some of them said fuck all this and just became gunfighters and used this ability they had, which is exactly the same. It's why in Japan. I don't know if you watch Kurosawa movies, like samurai movies. You need to, you need to, need to watch some things. <laughs> <sighs> Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Okay. Fistful of Dollars. Yes. Fistful of Dollars is a remake. Oh, okay. Yes, of a Japanese movie, a black and white Japanese movie called Yojimbo. 
This is not Yo like Jimbo? a hidden idea. This is a true yeah. Yo Jimbo. Uh, Magnificent Seven. Mm -hmm. You saw it? Yes, I used to watch all those fucking movies. Okay, so The Magnificent Seven is a remake yeah. of the seven. Don't nod like you know it. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Well, I'm the trying seven to get through the samurai. fucking story, if I'm being honest. What? Nothing. Go ahead. This is all has to do with the presidents. <laughs> all right. We got to plow through these. We're I know. Still, we're still at we'll Hayes, and we're talking about Japanese we'll movies. The Seven Samurai is a, is uh, uh, the Magnificent Seven is a remake of The Seven Samurai. It's a total remake. Go watch these movies. It's amazing. Right. Because the Japanese, uh, uh, mid, I think it was called the Medieval Era, it was the same as our West because they had these wars with samurai. And then all those dynasties like broke up and it became just chaos and corrupted. They all became corrupt. Yeah. And so the samurai just wandered the, 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 the yeah, hills gone for called him. Ronin and they just oh, became swords shit. for hire. Yeah. And so that was just exactly the same as gunmen. So these great Japanese movies about these swordsmen who were just out for hire in, in these towns where there was no law were precise, perfect. I'm just saying that these kind of things happen all over the of world. Course. Um, okay, so Hayes. Who came after Hayes? Fuck Hayes. Who came after Hayes? Garfield. 1880. Care. No, this is a good one. Okay. This is a cool fact about him. He could write Latin with one hand and Greek with the other simultaneously. And they were like, this guy is going to be, he's smart enough. He could be the guy to get us out. Because this is after. So he was another nerd. He was, he was, he was a nerd. nerd. He was a nerd. But this is after three straight duds. This is after By Johnson. Way, I can do that. Johnson, Grant. <laughs> just fucking. Uh, 200 days in his office, into office, he was on his way to a college reunion. He was at a DC rail College state. reunion? He was going to a college reunion. Wow. There's like different. Jello shots and he was gonna do, yeah. beer bongs. He was going to go wild. He was shot twice in the back by a guy named Charles Guiteau. Mm -hmm. And Guiteau is a very interesting. I looked into him last night. He was a moron. He was a traveling moron who thought that he had campaigned it's like a village idiot but a traveling he just like he would go fail in town to town and everyone hated him fail doing what he religious shit he joined like a cult they were like this guy fucking sucks mm -hmm. then he he would be like i'm gonna start a paper for that cult in a different town it would fail and he would go to like boston and yell at people it didn't work he would just go around fucking up and then he was in dc and he started trying to give speeches on behalf of garfield so then when garfield won he was like, I did that. I want to be the fucking ambassador to Paris. And they were like, no. And he was like, how about Vienna? <laughs> they were like, who are you? <laughs> so then he got angry and then uh, he bought a gun. But he was kind of aware of the what significance kind of, gun of it. Did he, use? he bought a, it was a bulldog revolver. Mm. And it had, he couldn't afford the ivy, ivory handle. Yeah. So the guy selling the gun was like, all right, you can just, I'll give you the one with the ivory handle. And he's like, this is going to be in a museum. <laughs> is like, it? Uh, somebody lost it. There's a picture of it, yeah. But he shot him twice, um, and then he. How yelled. did he get close to him? I think back then you could just walk, walk up. There was no secret the service. You could just walk up behind him, and he yelled like, "I'm here for Arthur, who was the vice president, Chester Arthur." Yeah, he was like, "Chester Arthur is the real president because he's gonna <laughs> he kill him. He's gonna <laughs> yeah. make me ambassador." He to killed him. him. Garfield died two months later. From these wounds, so he's uh, the he's then the fourth guy. So he was the well, he was the second guy to get killed in office. Yes, this is after Lincoln. Yep, second then guy Garfield. to get killed in office. Okay, um, Chester enough. Arthur takes over, doesn't do shit. Eighteen eighty four is uh, now comes Grover Cleveland. This is the first major media election. Papers are now starting to be partisan. Mm -hmm. uh, Cleveland. Don't care. Don't Cleveland gets accused of having a kid out of wedlock. James Blaine was a crook, whatever. Cleveland mm. barely wins. He hated the press. Mm. One thing that's cool is he married a 21-year-old. Ow! Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> then he won the popular vote and lost the electoral to Benjamin Harrison. His hot 21-year-old wife said, don't fucking move anything in the White House. We're going to be back in four years. Oh. Pretty hot. Benjamin Harrison. She's still around, probably. Grandson of William Henry Harrison. Uh, he didn't do anything. He actually did nothing. He would leave the office at noon every day and just go hunt. Just go upstairs? Yeah, just hang out. Okay, so him and, <laughs> yeah. So this is still just a run of horrific presidents. Stinks. All these guys just stink. Destroying and we're the marching country. through the 18, there yes. are late 1800s. 1893, Cleveland gets reelected. Yeah. People liked his hot daughter and now their new daughter or his hot bride. Wife, yeah. 
and now their new daughter, Baby Ruth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know the candy bar? Yeah, but isn't that Baby named, Ruth? Uh, no. That's I think it's Babe named Ruth? after their daughter. You don't think it's named after Babe Ruth? You got to look that up, dude. I'm on it. Feels closer to true. That, did they even have candy bars back then? Look, man. You know what? Don't who mounds, holes in you know who mounds was named after? Ew. Your mother's cunt. I had a feeling. <laughs> I had a strong feeling. Yeah. What? This is uh, the candy bar was named after Ruth Cleveland. Uh, I like that. It took place in 1921. Okay. So you can check mounds. <clears throat> okay. Just check mounds. Up. See if mounds was named after my mother's cunt. Okay. Well, I mean, it's just sad, Shane. What if it says <laughs> Mrs. Shane? What if it says Mrs. CK? <laughs> what if there's a twist maybe i'm projecting <laughs> it could be uh that gets it all right but this is this, these guys are destroying the country uh, unemployment's at 18 percent. Right. yeah great there's a depression mckinley comes into office 1897 he did his campaign entirely from his front porch in ohio yes which is pretty funny and he's the first ohio guy isn't he grant think he's the- grant is grant? from ohio that's right but there was like a run of Ohio. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. straight through, but there's a lot of Ohio dudes. All these guys. Okay, Cleveland, so uh, yeah. McKinley's from Ohio. Um, he was the last president who served in the Civil War. He didn't want war. Everybody seemed to... He His whole thing was cultivating good press. He was the first guy that seemed to master that. Yeah. He understood it because Cleveland before him uh, fucking hated it. So let's get to Teddy, okay? Because he's the only guy that I... I the well, only, this is good, Something though. important to say about McKinley? Uh, yeah, I mean, he started. He started in 1898. The Spanish Empire was falling. Cuba was open. There's Cuban yeah. rebels. Yeah. Uh, he didn't want to, but eventually got talked into it because guys like William Randolph Hearst, yeah. the, all the major media people were like, "We we got to go to war. Fuck that." Uh, so he sent the USS Maine into Cuba's port. Somehow it exploded. No one knows how. Mm. Uh, 250 guys died. Media demanded war with Spain. That's, a, that's where the remember the main, all that shit comes from. Uh, McKinley created the Situation Room in the White House. That was pretty tight mm-hmm. so that they could. Mm-hmm. Huh? It's exciting mm-hmm. stuff. Nice work. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 10-week war. Yeah. The U.S. fucks them up. Um, in, in his thing, he'd be annexed Puerto Rico in the Philippines, also annexed Hawaii in 1898. 1900, he wins the election, this time with his vice president, Teddy Roosevelt. Yes. And we can get into Teddy, dude. So Teddy... Fascinating thing about Teddy. First of all, Teddy was born deformed. Yeah. His uh, lungs and his uh, organs were too small for his chest cavity. And his doctor told his father, um, he's got to stay in bed and he'll probably die in his teens. Yeah. So he told Teddy, well, they, you weren't born with much of a body, so you'll have to make your body. And Teddy just became insane and yeah. walked up the Matterhorn, just walked up it. Dude. He was a ball of insane energy. He would just do anything. Yeah, he was kind of terrifying. He was. And uh, he was um, kind of an animal. Yeah. But also very intuitive, very brilliant guy. Like, he was the first guy that they did, like, caricatures of. Like, he saw, because he had his crazy big teeth and his glasses. So he was the first guy that they drew, like, this funny version of him. And he liked it. Yeah. <laughs> He thought that's cool because they're thinking about me. The fact that they're caricaturizing me means that I'm an icon. I'm, a, I'm, I'm yeah. something above of you know. And he liked it, so he let that proliferate. But the other thing about him is that he liked being. He didn't like being in charge of things. He liked being number two. So like they asked him to run New York City Police Department, and he became a commissioner. He's like, I'll just be one of the commissioners. Yeah. He was like number two. But he ran everything from that number two position because he knew number one is like the shittiest job in any place. So he started, I don't know, I'm uneducated and I read this a long time ago, but I think he invented the police academy mm. because New York, or, or at least he in, in put one in in New York yeah. City. In New York City, to be a cop, you had to be in a family of cops or you had to pay somebody <laughs> because it was the easiest job in the world. You just did. You just walked around in the uniform, yeah. and cops used to sleep like in alleys, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and they didn't do it. They <laughs> never, never stopped crime. Yeah, and they just get paid to protect one gang or the other in New York City, and so and they were all fat and often quite old. 
So Teddy said, yeah, there's age restriction. You can't be old. He said, you have to be in shape. You have to go to an academy and you have to train to be a cop. You have to be taught. You have to have an education. You get taught lots of things in an academy. It's a school. And um, so he started that. Police department hated him. He pushed it through. He reformed the New York Police Department to the point, and this is where he was better than other politicians. He wanted to test them and show that they were honest. And the only way to do that is to have them um, enforce a law that everybody hates. So I think the law was that you couldn't drink on Sundays. Sunday. So he had the cops go around New York City and bust anybody who was drinking on a Sunday. And 100% of New Yorkers hated him for this. Yeah. And they ran him out of town on a rail. And he was fired. But to him, it was like mission accomplished. Yeah. Teddy would do everything until he was despised. Like yeah. he would go past the point because his goal was the goal. The goal is the cops are better. Not everybody loves Teddy. Yeah. So then he, every time he got fired, he would just go to Montana and live yeah, in a yeah, fucking yeah. hut and kill buffalo. <laughs> and then they went and people would send emissaries and say, please run in this, this, please run in this company. Please run this company. He would always say no. And then they came to him and asked him to run the U.S. Navy. He did a similar thing to the United States Navy, which I know less about. Yeah. Um, he and, was obsessed with... The war in 1812, I think he wrote a book on it. Yeah. What was how we could have won that quickly. We almost lost it because mm -hmm. we didn't have a Navy ready. Mm -hmm. And his whole thing was we need to have a huge Navy. That's right. Like the war, it's actually pretty sick. He gave a speech to, I think, either West Point or the Naval Academy where he was like, it was probably the Naval Academy. Um, he was like, there's a vacuum right now. England's failing. There needs to be one leader. Someone needs to be the somebody in the world. Naval power. Yeah, he did two things that have lasted till now. I mean, a lot of things, but two are the national park system. Yeah, uh, it just it, no one even thought of that. That didn't exist. The idea of like the government should protect vast tracts of land. Yeah. and not allow anybody to fuck with them. No one in the, on the earth did that. Teddy Roosevelt invented that idea. So that exists because of him. They still don't have it. In the Amazon, they don't do it. That's why it's a, a nightmare because there's no laws down there that say you can't do this. Everyone just wishes they wouldn't. So Teddy did that and he made, gave us, uh, made us a naval power. Um, but, uh, and when, then he was vice president, which he didn't want. It. He, had to, he yeah. was like drafted into running for vice president. Let's talk about this was uh, him and the Spanish, the Spanish War. Yes. The, the, and, What's it called? Hill. Uh, San, uh, uh, um, fucking San San Juan Hill. Yeah, and he went over. Yeah, he went over he's the hill. A dickhead. He, yeah, he was nuts. He got everybody killed. Yes, he did. He was crazy. He so what was cool was his the Rough Riders were cool. It was all yes. old West guys. Yes, like gunslingers, buffalo hunters, Native Americans mixed with New York Irish cops, uh -huh. like just the nastiest fucking dudes. Well, and back then, then you could make. Like yeah. a platoon. Yeah. Like you could tell the army, like, I'm going to make a platoon. Yeah, I, you just bought a platoon. I bought some guys. I brought yeah. some guys. He and was, we call he was ourselves 40. the Rough Riders. And the army's like, okay, you're part of the army. He I was guess. 40. Yes. And he had a family. He had a sick wife and mm -hmm. a family. And they were like, what are you doing? Why the fuck would you be going to war? Yes. And he's like, because want he wanted to go to war. He was also <laughs> yeah. a rich patriarch yeah. uh, on in Oyster Bay. He had this beautiful house, a big family. He was responsible to a lot of people. Yeah. He took over when his dad died. He became like the man of a very it's sprawling his brother, family. His brother's great. Teddy's his brother's brother, the yes. one I kind of was like. So in the beginning. What was his about, brother's name? Uh, I don't remember. Was I, it Kermit? Was it another Kermit? Kermit might be a Kermit son. Kermit was his son. Yeah. He went to the Amazon later with his son, <laughs> yeah. Kermit. He, they went on, on little rowboats <laughs> in to the up the Amazon River and almost died. He got malaria. And he weighed, Teddy weighed like 80 pounds. This is after he was yeah. president twice. <laughs> this is in retirement. <laughs> like he named certain tracts of the Amazon yeah. River. He was crazy. It was, he was, he, he was, was fucking nuts. So wait, so then when he was. Wait, yeah. his brother was a drunk who. Elliot, Elliot was out of control. Uh -huh. He was the one who was supposed to be the good son. Right. But he got like, he, he just did what anybody would do if they were a Roosevelt. Number one always fucks partied. up. Again, that's why Teddy was the number two son. He yeah. was the. It's it's like Joe Joe Kennedy J uh, uh, John F Kennedy was supposed to be Joe Kennedy his brother um, Donald and, Trump didn't he have an older brother, he had brother John who drank himself yes that's what this, old brothers do Roosevelt Jimmy Carter's brother Billy 
Did Drank Clinton? himself to death. Didn't Clinton have one? Roger, Cl- uh, Roger Clinton was younger than him. Oh, okay. But yeah, a lot of these guys have older brothers who, who just couldn't make it. But it's funny how he his brother ended up in like a mental hospital in like Paris. According to this documentary, he was drinking like six bottles of brandy a day. <laughs> he was just not bad. And then the way life. he died, the way he died was like he had like a he had delirium from the alcohol, and he was trying to jump out of a window, but he kept just running up and down the steps. And he had a and heart he, attack. He, he had like an aneurysm Jesus. and a seizure. <laughs> okay, so when Teddy was <laughs> just, here's a great story about Teddy. Shit. The way where Teddy bears come from. Okay, Teddy Roosevelt was on in Pennsylvania again. Your fucking state might have been incredible Virginia. state. Not much difference. So um, Teddy was there and uh, on tour as president. And there were some people, you know, every time the president comes to a town, they always like they get so excited and they plan stuff. So they knew he loves hunting bear. Yeah. So when when Teddy hunts bear, he's way up in a mountain alone with a gun and he, it's him and the bear and he might die. Yeah. But these people think he's like a gentleman hunter. So they take him. We're going to take you to hunt some bear and they give him a gun. And they take him into the woods and there's a bear chained to a tree a little bear who's kind of emaciated and it was chained to a tree and they go shoot him (laughs) and teddy breaks down into tears yeah and he says for the love of god let that poor animal go and there was some journalist there who drew a picture that was like a little sketch that was in the paper of teddy with this and this little bear and it was they put the people put that together teddy and bear uh, and started making these stuffed bears that looked like Teddy because of this. Jesus oh. Christ. So that his first day as president. Yeah. Oh, well, let's uh, McKinley gets shot. Yeah. He got shot by an anarchist named Leon Cholgosh. Sure. Whatever. But it was interesting. I think him or. So now we've lost three presidents. Yeah, three guys got shot in mm-hmm. the 1800s. Since eighteen, so in the last forty years, yes. Um, and the the people are like, this was a gunshot today. He would have survived in two days. Yeah. So like Roosevelt found out about it. He was out doing some fucking hiking bullshit. Right. Somebody came running up the hill. Like he shot. You're the president. They get there. The guy's fine. He died from infection. Yeah. A lot of these are bad. This is bad medicine. Yeah. yeah they Back then, you could cut the president on the finger to death. Yeah. Because of how bad medicine was and how infected wounds got. Yeah. So, okay, so McKinley's dead. They're in Buffalo, New York. He gets sworn in. Yep. Teddy's the president. Teddy's the president of the United States. His first day at the White House, he's like walking into the White House and he gets, he runs into um, Booker T. Washington, a uh, black fella. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> Why so, is it Hulk Hogan? It's Booker T. He's a black wrestler oh okay <laughs> he is so it's an iconic moment booker t washington um <laughs> says uh hey i want to ta- i have some issues i want to talk about and teddy says come to dinner just come to the house tonight come to dinner first night in the white house he hosts a black man never happened in the history of the country a black man being um a guest for dinner at the white house the whole country goes nuts. It's the first event <laughs> of Teddy's presidency is that the Senate, and I could be having some of these things wrong, but the Senate unanimously censured the president <laughs> for having, there was nobody in yeah. the mix. It like if it was happened today and even like fucking AOC was like, oh no, you don't have him in the <laughs> White House. Everyone like all yeah. the way across the board said, that's not okay. And they censured him. They tried to throw him out. They're like, maybe we should impeach him, but the best thing they could do is censure him for having had a black man as a guest in the White House. So this was what Teddy did. This is the kind of guy he was. He went on, he had him to dinner constantly, and he went on a speaking tour with him. He made him, like, he elevated him more and more because he was just like, you know, fuck you guys. Yeah. There's one more I wanted to say about the Spanish Civil War that's pretty funny. Yeah. When they took that hill, he was on his horse. Everybody else was like, so they took one hill and then he saw San Juan Hill or whatever it's called. And he was like, we're going to take that. He went yeah. off by himself. Right. Five guys followed him. Three of them got shot. Yeah, because he went all so of a he, sudden. Yeah. He was like, we're doing this. Yeah, and they he, had didn't, to he, didn't order, he didn't order anything. He no, just into went. a hail of gunfire. So then he came back and one of the guys was laying down. And he mm-hmm. was like, how are you going to lay down when I'm up on this horse? Get up. And as soon as the guy stood up, he got shot in the head. <laughs> Killed instantly. <laughs> then he led the charge and they were all, you know, a lot of them died. 
But some of them could have been president. He did it purely out of like I wanted to be in war, which is really a terrible, terrible thing. Terrible, terrible leader. He for had that for that. Yeah, I mean it's. But he won. He won. It worked out. It did work out. Uh, and and then when he was another great story about him that I heard was that uh, he would fight whoever was the heavyweight champ. Oh yeah, yeah. he would <laughs> bare knuckle. Yeah. So like Jack Johnson, I think, had just won the championship, so he was invited. He doesn't know this was going to happen. He's invited to the White House. So he, I don't know if they had an Oval Office yet. Yeah. Comes into the Oval Office. I believe Ted, they did. And Teddy was like, oh, terrific. And he fucking starts. <laughs> and Jack Johnson's like, what are you doing? He's don't like, come do on this. now. Because to him, it was like it made sense yeah. that the president should fight with the heavyweight champion. <laughs> Dude. And he fought him. And Johnson uh, blinded him in one <laughs> eye. And Teddy begged him, please don't tell anybody. Because yeah. I'll get it. Because Teddy, he's not supposed to do this. So he used to get people to leave the room. And then he fought him and he blind, and he was always blinding that eye, which he was always in denial about because he was sort of ashamed that he did this thing. Yeah, so, this guy's insane. He was nuts. Again, to me, I'm approaching these guys as characters. Yeah. As fascinating he was, individuals. But he did, he did a ton of great shit. And then he started going after all these trusts. He started breaking Trust up busting. all these monopolies. He started. Right. So he's the first president from this fucking lull of just garbage presidents to start to actually like reform shit. That's right. And start to really Well, that's what he, he became believed. A like progressive, when he was when he yeah. was governor of New York, he was doing something that was like huge and one of his aides said, "If you pull this off, you could run for president." And Teddy s- snapped at him and said, "Don't ever in your life say something like that to me." He said, "If I add my own career and potential to the math of my decisions then it'll destroy everything he said we never never think about my career and he really did live that way. yeah he personally wanted to be though that's funny like he wrote uh to his lady because he was in dc yeah maybe before he was the vice president Mm -hmm. he was in new york that's that's when he became the vice president he was in new york and that guy Mm -hmm. that he was in his political party i forget the guy's name was like Send him to D.C. I don't want him in New York anymore. Yeah. He's a fucking nightmare. No, he was He's a fighting nightmare for everybody. He He's had fighting no everybody. comfortable place he yeah. could possibly be, but president of the United States. But he was like, every time I walk past the White House, like, I could be there someday. Yes. Like, he had that in there, but. The greatest he, piece of film on Teddy is that he was the first president to fly in an airplane. And there's film of it. He went in with a hot rod guy who was like bar- a barnstormer guy. Yeah. And it's just a biplane and they show him, you know, it's shitty black and white footage, but he gets in the plane and it corkscrews and does. He was already retired. He was kind of older. And you see him get out of it and you see him go like, oh, 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 that was crazy. But that's how much of a badass he was. Youngest president also. Youngest one. 42 or 43. Yeah. Yes. Won two terms. Won two terms. And then... And then elected. And then left. Uh, then he decided not to run the third time because of he didn't like Republican politics. And then he ran for a third term after skipping after, a term. And he split the vote. Uh, on a then, new... On, yeah. What was it called? The party? Bull Moose? Or something like that? Oh, yeah. We're skipping the party to get shot. Yes, he got, <laughs> he got shot, shot. Point in blank chest. in the chest. <laughs> and he had his... A big, thick thing of his speech. Yeah. And he had um, something else metal. I forget what was that. Something like that. It wasn't a flask, I don't yeah. think. But he had some shit in his pocket. Didn't The get bullet hurt. got lodged into his chest, though. Right. It went, but it, it went was into in his, his chest. It didn't, it didn't get into his, uh, into his It didn't heart. break his muscle. No. It stuck there. And then he apparently cleared his throat. Finished his, the speech. And he, finished, he said, it's going to take a lot more to kill a bull moose. That's what he said. Which is pretty fucking wild. Getting shot in the middle of a speech, <laughs> clearing your throat. It's a great moment. Look, dude, here's what we need to focus on. And this has been my focus for the last three days, yes. four days. I've been very autistic for Mexican cartels. Yes, dude. Mex- How did we get through that whole episode without bringing up the cartel? Oh, you had to go through JFK. I had to get JFK. But Mexican cartels, dude. This is what I've been up to. I have a book called El Narcos. 
Shit Rules by E. Owen Griot. Sounds sick. Um, El Narco, dude. Shit Rules. Although it was, I think it was written in like 08, so it's going to leave out a lot of stuff like Chapo breaking out. <laughs> yeah, cool yeah. shit. You already know all that anyway. I already know all that, but the it, I've been l- listening to that book, so I go to sleep every night to Mexican cartels. Yeah. While I've been awake, I've been playing a Narcos video game. I've been playing Ghost Recon Wildlands. Shit rules. Damn. Please give me night vision and a silenced assault rifle breaking into houses. That's, That's all fun. I need. That's pretty fun. <laughs> That's all I need. Really? Where's yes. all this? It's the coolest shit in the occur? world. This occurs in Bolivia. I believe that's where Dirty Deeds is from. Really? Or is he from Belize? Belize. All right. Damn, he's from, Just don't ruin the show. He's from Ma- he's from McAfee's. Which one? Oh, yeah, McAfee yeah, yeah. Belize. Yes. That's sick. McAfee went I down and tried Dorian to ruin Dorian's. He's a Belizean. Just a, that's what happened. McAfee went Don't down there and got a bunch of Belizean. got a bunch of Dorians <laughs> to work for him. Yeah, he did. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. I need sure. you to kill this guy's dog. Okay, fine. All right. <laughs> oh, oh hell yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, so I've been playing a Narcos video game before. While I sleep and drive, I'm listening to a no- book on Narcos, and then I rewatched Narcos Mexico. I mean, dude, pure Narcos. How have dude. you not killed somebody? I've retained. How have you not somebody I've retained yet? none of it. Really? <laughs> it's crazy. What are they up to? I don't know. I just like the machismo and the music for sure, and just mutilating and torturing your enemies. Did you ever see the uh, like the live leak version of cartel video? There's like a, yeah. there's like channels just dedicated to cartel yes. videos. I I was on those. Or like while they were taking were place, really? yes. The main board, <laughs> the main board used to be all cartel shit. Yeah. Well, it used to have a thread dedicated to cartel shit. The main board was like pre Reddit, like this. Uh, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. like I was on that shit. True. But yeah, I remember watching the guys get chainsawed, all that shit. You ever watch that one? No. It's the craziest shit you've ever seen. This it's two dudes chainsawed. sitting next to each other, about to get chainsawed to death. I think it was by Los Zetas, the Zetas, dude. Damn. Los Zetas. Uh, Zeta's fucking rule. But these two dudes sitting next to each other, they get chainsawed. The one dude, it goes through him like this, from like this shoulder, like that. Ah, uh, so the guy's, pretty, pretty easily? The guy's saying, oh, yeah, it goes, it's a chainsaw. It literally yeah, just yeah. Zzz, straight through him, Woo. cuts him like this, and then into the other guy's arm, who's sitting next to him. The guy doesn't even flinch. He's like, with a chainsaw into his arm, he's just like... Damn. Like, they're the hardest, craziest dudes on earth. And then they're like, all right, we got to kill him with a knife. And, like, hold it up and... Yeah, it's I know crazy. knives it's, are a little harder than... Knives are very gross. And then then you see somebody like... <laughs> like, they make a pretty... Gru- I mean, it's terrible. And I, I don't know how I used to be able to watch that stuff. I can't at yeah. all anymore. But... That's tough, dude. Listening to a British guy read it out loud before bed isn't that bad. Kind of nice. It's nice. I could fall asleep to a nice British guy being and like, In Las Cetas, 40 bodies were littered across the street. <laughs> what was going on in El Chapo's? But no, Zetas... <laughs> The Zetas were the Gulf Coast of Mexico. Mm-hmm. Dude, Mexico's nuts. I don't yeah. know if you know about Mexico. I've been there. They, are, they are nuts, dude. Yeah. As far as like their government, they had, they had a one-party government forever. Vincente Fox, I think, was the first. I remember Fox. Mm-hmm. So that we were alive Sounds for that. That was like the yeah. first real Democrat. Which they have a one-party? Democratic party? Ele- yeah, they had one party. The IR... IRF? So there were there were just elections that like there's one political party. Yeah, and then one guy lost to a guy, and they were like, "Oh, the computer shut down. Sorry, that election doesn't count." Yeah, Damn. they got wild. And then there was like a huge earthquake in Mexico City, and the government like really fucked up. So then Democrats started, other parties started showing up. But uh, who what do they have now? Uh, they have a, it's a democratic okay. country, but they have, I'm saying do they have a couple. I I don't know. Yeah. I'm in 2008. That's when this book is. I mean, you know the Founding Fathers explicitly stated they didn't want a true democracy a bunch of times when they wrote all the documents. What do you mean? They didn't want a true... The Founding Fathers of America... I'm talking about America now. Yeah. You know, they didn't, they didn't want a democracy at all. Why not? They were like, we don't, we don't, they, just, they were like, we're not going to let poor people vote. That's stupid. They were like said it a bunch of times. They're like, dude, that would be a disaster. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, was, yeah. You're ruining our democracy. What an absolute disaster. Every, constitu- you want every idiot to vote? No. Yeah, they, no. they were very much against being like horrible. Everyone reveres them. They're like, oh, they're, the fa-. they're like, we're like, poor people suck and are dumb. Yeah. Apparently, they said that a bunch of times. Yeah, but imagine poor people in the 
17 oh, yeah. 1770 can you imagine poor people dude just a poor person no tv no school they're just poor and just like dude, I mean, the levels, they just lived in the woods just dumb. Well, yeah exactly just a even guy dumb. in the woods weren't even dumb i wouldn't even say dumb yeah just, feral you meet a guy and he'd be like, yeah, yeah. yeah just be a, a man in the woods like, ah, <laughs> ah. like all right we gotta let him pick who <laughs> is controlling this new republic but right. go ahead zetas are on the on the east coast mm-hmm. they're in the gulf that's like the gulf cartel the zetas started out as special forces mexican soldiers nice that like splintered off which is crazy because back then the only like the police all get bought for the most part it's easy to corrupt that but the the military was supposed to be like the guys that never did it yeah but then z1 z1 i'm sure it's just z1 but i'm listening to a british guy read this book so it's z1 yeah fuck like <laughs> jerk probably z1 um Who's Zed One? He was like the first special forces guy to flip, and then he recruited a bunch of other special forces and soldiers to be the first like military paramilitary like hitmen for a cartel, and they just started getting. They were like they fought the military, and they just start. They started. They started their own f- shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the leader of that group got fuck. That's got to be fun. So the head of Z One Zed One got killed, fuck. Because then the the government was just like, all right, fuck it, gloves are off. We're just killing. Yeah, like we can't we can't try to do this traditionally where we'd arrest you because they're just breaking out and fight. So then it became a war. There was a drug war, and this is like two thousand two, two thousand three, and uh, it's just fucking. Cra- I mean, it's it's crazy. And they we taught them how to torture. Like they yeah. got s- training from the CIA on how to torture people, how to like what to do, how to do it. Jeez. There's like handbooks that the the U.S. gave them on how to torture. Pretty chill. Sweet. We do rule. Yeah, we know a couple. We know a couple things. <laughs> Starting to get a cough, dude. You gave me Corona. I I'm, I didn't give anybody anything. I got a rhino, dude. No, I, if it it can't be you, it can't be your fault. I got the paperwork. Yeah, it's like in so re- much realer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can get on a microphone and say China's someone asshole. should shoot Donald yeah. Trump in the head, and everyone's yeah. like, ha ha ha. If you go to Chinese and say, well, that's because the president doesn't matter. If you're like, if you found the dude in control, and you're like, someone's got to take this person out, they'd be like, you you would be dead. But yeah, true. It's, okay. it's much less. It's much less. It's very yeah. much less. Like, dude, my uh. So I was talking to my friend's brother, active troop. He's actually like a troop lawyer now. So he's like a lawyer for the Marines, and he does like rules of engagement kind of law, like which is so crazy now because he was he, what he was explaining to me was like the weaponry is so advanced that like so if you're flying in formation, you can be locked on. But it used to be like the rule was if like a you know when people were flying by like with a scarf and shit, and they would. Like, open fire you could fire back but now like you can die in a second so like if you know there's anti-aircraft stuff on the ground it's like technically that could be engagement because they let's you have to wait till the guy in front of you blows up till you can engage so like he was like talking about all that but either, he was saying he went to china because he was in japan he was like it's very well known that you don't bring your cell phone over there because the government takes your as soon as you enter china they take your cell phone and strip all your data off Wow. And then they take all your personal information because they want to know if, like, CIA three-letter agency guys are there. So, like, if you don't match up to, like, all this – that they breached our uh, intelligence system, took, like, 80 million Americans' information because they're building a, a dossier to, to know if a foreign spy is in their thing. And that's that's what they were using their internet to do. So he's like, you bring a burner phone. You don't bring anything that has, like, yeah. any of your digital record because the first thing they do is steal all of your data as soon as you go in. And he was saying the so the Silicon Valley, like so they get courted by the military a lot. The military will come shop and like here's what we're looking for product wise. So, yeah. you know like but the way it works is before you get funding, you got to show us how it works. And then you know the mil- Amer- American military in good faith will be like, cool, knock yourself out. We just have to make sure it works. So you're getting Chinese investors coming here and being like, show us the goods, and they're just like thanks, and they leave and they steal the plans and reverse engineer it, and they're like China is asshole, asshole, dude. dude so, like, China is such. So everyone's asshole. like they're such fucking asshole because like they're. Back to the Zetas, dude. I mean, hit me with that, dude. I'm thinking about. I was just fantasizing about starting like an army with my boys, dude. Like, you guys want to fucking start our own army? We gotta be drenched. (laughs) (laughs) Los Aguas. Damn, dude. So they just fully bucked the system and were like, "Let's go." Yeah. But the Sinaloans, dude. You gotta watch the Sinaloans. So this is what happened. The Sinaloans. That's like El Chapo. Yeah. That's the fucking guys you hear. That's fucking the jefe de jefe. Come on, bro. That's fucking rules, dude. Gallardo. El jefe de jefes. Damn. Okay, so the Zetas the were just chilling. They were just doing their thing. <clears throat> I have it. <clears throat> East Coast. <clears throat> Gulf Cartel. Sinaloans on the West Coast. Like Baja, all that. Although Baja is something different now. Sinaloa is a state 
on the west coast of Mexico. You know how there's like that thing that sticks yeah. down Baja, Mexico. Well, no, but yeah, I, I can believe. I almost lied and said yes. I'm trying to be. That's all right. Close. Yeah, <clears throat> it's California. It's called Baja California. Uh, it's like okay, that long okay. line that yeah. sticks down. The Sinaloa cartels were like the first like this guy named uh, I just said it, Gayardo. He like <laughs> Gayardo. Don't you dare make fun, dude. He's the jefe, the jefe. I know, just you know. He linked all the plazas, dude. He linked all the fucking cartels to... Oh, sick. So they linked... They were selling weed. Yeah. And then the Colombians started shipping coke to the United States through Mexico. Mm -hmm. And they, they were doing... They were using the Bahamas for a while, but that got shut down. So then they had to use Mexico mm -hmm. to ship all their cocaine in. Mexico wasn't really creating the cocaine. Yeah. They were just shipping it in. And the Colombians were like, we own these fucking idiots. Mexicans are dumb. Mm -hmm. We're the fucking... We're the best. Nobody can say... And then Mexico was just like, all right, well, how about we kill you guys like the mexico yeah. was just like all right this is ours now yeah and so then mexico became huge and it was under gallardo and then chapo dude El chapo <laughs> rose up but this is all sinaloa so yeah. it's all these dudes these like they were considered like hicks mm -hmm. they're like mountain people just growing weed and shit yeah they were growing weed up there like great dude you should these weed fields are so sick. Yeah, they were putting in like that black fly. Like huge weed Did you ever fields. Did you hear about the black fly chemicals? They got rid of sticks and stems. What? They were the ones who started they growing stuff. They full sense of me? I don't know what it's called. It's, yeah, the seedless. They went like full seedless They weed. created so it was just female weed plants. And it had to be so far sense away from other yeah. weed so it didn't cross-pollinate that they had to go build their own weed fields. So like they, up in the mountains. They claim they started that? Yes. No, they did That goes back way long. Uh, I mean, maybe they started bringing that first stuff around, but how like, long? I mean, like there was like tie sticks in the seventies. You know, this is this is back then? then. Yeah, maybe they did. I don't. I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm not yeah, gonna. Yeah, yeah. How dare around. you? I just. You give her, well, I'm part of me cartels. Pardon me. Well, well, dude, it's like me compañero. Que bruto. <laughs> Lo siento. <laughs> no, I just whenever you see like that brick weed because they they used to do like stuff that was like sprayed with like black fly chemicals. Oh you know, well, that's what happened. Really? So then there was the war on drugs. And the Mexican government started where they were allowed to spray the fields yeah. with pesticides oh, that's and shit. What it was, yeah, or not pesticides, but shit that killed the fields. Mm -hmm. And then the cartels were like, "Fuck it, we're going to use them anyway." Yeah. So then they would ship poisonous weed to the United States, and yeah. that's when shit really got bad for them. Ooh. But then they started. Then they fucked over the Colombians and took coke and all became right. huge. So it was all these, all these West Coast hillbillies versus yeah. the fucking Gulf Coast. And then the Zetas. All right, here <laughs> Sorry, we go. This, the Mexican government was just like, I'm going to turn your sense of me into swag. And they're like, fuck it. We don't care, dude. We're going to sell this swag. <laughs> your weed's not going to be so dank anymore. <laughs> your weed is not dank at all. It's not even sticky at all. This stuff sucks, dude. Your pounds are going to have nothing but shake. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Sinaloans are the guys. They're the fucking shit. That's a good territory, too. That little stretch of yeah, California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. California, all that, but the real stretch ended up becoming the Gulf Coast because Dallas and Houston started blowing up, like becoming major yeah, cities yeah. over the last like forty years. Um, but Z the Zetas, so this guy, I forget his name, he has the Gulf Coast. He hires special forces. The head special forces guy gets killed. The leader gets captured. So then the Sinaloans are like, all right, they don't have a leader. It's time for us to move in on the Gulf Coast. That's when just a huge drug war erupts because all those special forces dudes are still there. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, we'll run this. Yeah, like, what the fuck? And then all the Sinaloans, are, so El Chapo versus the fucking so it's like, special forces. It's, it's like the coolest shit. Tactical ever. shit versus, like, dudes with musta mustaches, yes. basically. Wild shit. And then they all they do is torture and kill each other. And like, Damn. The, the Zetas have hitmen that were, like, leaving messages. They're like, fucking keep sending these fucking bendejas. Like all that, which turns out that just means pubes. What? Bendejas. I'm an asshole. <laughs> Bendeja is a pube. It's a pube. I think it's Bendeja. <laughs> these pubes. Yeah. I thought Bendeja was that. I keep sending those pubes that we're going to keep killing. I think it translates directly to pubes. <laughs> I don't think there's. They don't have a three syllable word for pubes in Mexico, oh, dude. You'd be surprised. <laughs> dude. Bendeja. Dude, please. Yeah, we need to fact check that because one of the words means pubes. It says pubis. Yeah. What? So Bendeja is our pubes. Yes. I always thought I was an asshole. So some damn those motherfuckers were calling me pubes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I am an asshole. Yeah, what do you know you gotta do about it? <laughs> You're yeah, I'm just an asshole, man. You're fucking pube. Yeah, I was like a dishwasher. Yeah, like you little know? fucking pubes. Yeah, but my day and I'm like, yeah, dude, I am kind of a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, who's that's what's going who's on. winning right now? Who's like right now? 
Now, again, I'm back in 08. I, I've, I've been looking at it. I think the Cinelones are still doing work. Yeah. MS-13 started getting brought down. Swag. MS-13 was from L.A. Trump and El Salvador. Saved, saved us from them. They did. And I, you know what's funny? I looked at... This is how fucking gay our country is. Yeah. I looked at I looked at MS-13's Wikipedia page, and one at the bottom of the paragraph, they're like, even though they you know count for less than one percent of the murders in this country, Republicans are acting like that, and it's like these are the worst people on earth. Yeah, yeah. like I like just because the Republicans definitely exaggerate that it's like a menace that we have to worry about, doesn't mean you should include that in the article about literally people that torture and murder. Yeah, for sure. Constantly. Yeah. Like, oh, and the Republicans are exaggerating about how bad it is. <laughs> it's like, no, leave that part out. Well, that's, that was Trump's fatal flaw, because I think now that's what politics have devolved into. It's like, you got to just come up with the spookiest tale, dude. Spooky, dude. Spooky. dude. MS-13 is very spooky. Turned out Trump went down. He doubled down hard on Mexicans. He came up with spooky tales about Mexicans. Everyone's like, ooh, that sounds pretty spooky. I <laughs> yeah, love yeah, this yeah. guy. And Biden was like, how do you feel about a global pandemic? And everyone's like, oh. That's oh, cool. that's, that's way scary. way spookier. And Trump's like, yeah. come on, guys. Mexicans. Mexicans. Are so scary. Watch Breaking Bad season three, guys. The fucking <laughs> fucking head on a turtle. Come on, yeah, they they're in your high schools. <laughs> Mexicans are in your high schools. <laughs> Remember they said MS thirteen was recruiting in high schools in Texas. Yeah, yeah. Your, MS- your son, your son, your sweet white boy is gonna join MS thirteen. He's gonna get a face tattoo. He's gonna just look like Post Malone. Is that what you want? Los Malones, <laughs> Los Post Malones. Come on, I, dude. I, I every time they said suburbs during the debates, made me so happy. They're like in the suburbs. And Nobody like, knows the suburbs. Trump would be like, you than don't me. even know the suburbs. The only are. time you've been in the like, suburbs is when you get lost. I was in Erie for ten years. It's getting great reviews. No, right? It'll probably get good reviews, but not a good audience score. Okay. You know that's yeah. how those typically work. Well, yeah, I've talked about it before, where they're redoing the, um, like the the statistics, like the ethnic statistics in America, and it's going pretty. It's getting to be like fifty percent white, fifty percent Latino, black, Asian, blah blah blah. So they're like, I guess, but I, I just. I don't know, dude. I I feel like that shit's got to be just weird, like, constantly. Yeah. It's like Braveheart Part 27. It's like, all right, dude, Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe they get... I don't, I don't know who... Like, how many people still get stoked on it if they're like, dude, this is just weird. I don't know. I mean, if I was black, I'd be watching that shit like, fuck yeah. I'd be so... Maybe. Rude. I mean, I was so... I, you're like, still... You know, it's good. And it's interesting. I like the way The Watchman does, like... It's like a revisionist history. Of course. Where, like, somehow, the, I think one of, I think something that happens, at least in the movie, was, like, the Nazis won or something, yeah. and then the United States is still run by Nixon, like, he never left. Okay. And we won Vietnam, now it's a state. Oh, it's kind of cool. That's pretty neat. So that's part of the Watchmen world? Yeah. Yeah, it's also weird, too, to, like, go fishing around for, like, negative events in history, and then spin... Like, the whole yarn from that. It's kind of like, I don't know. If you did that with, like, anybody else, yeah, it'd be tough. And then... Start a movie with, like, something, like, horrible. So, like, J- Jesse Jackson calling for, like, the death of Jews in New York. <laughs> and like, what, what does that have to do with what the <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, is yeah, this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you ever see that? Uh, Jaime Town? Yeah. Yeah, yeah pretty the, sick. The kid got killed. He was like, they're selling this jewelry and they're going to Israel. Everyone's like, yeah, dude, yeah, let's dude. go. I think he was running for president at the time. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, was that Jesse Jackson or was that uh No, it was Al Sharpton, I think. Al Sharpton went buck. Was, I think it was Jesse Jackson. Was it? I could be wrong. Sharp, one of them was Sharpton, running, Sharpton went ham on the Jews before. One of them was running for president and called it Jesse, Jaime, Jaime Town. Though that was different. So yeah. Jesse Jackson did that and everyone's like, "Huh?" <laughs> yeah. Al Sharpton, there was a uh, a kid got killed way back, like, I think maybe early. <laughs> Jaime Town. <laughs> 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 I, a kid got killed. And uh, or somebody got killed down there. I think like it was like the jewelry stores, and someone ended up getting shot or killed somehow. And there was like the, the Jewish shop owner was just like, I bet shot someone. I was like, oh fuck, oh fuck, and everyone started coming out like, what the fuck, what's going on? Somehow Sharpton made it down there and started being like, and these jewelry stores go back to Israel. They're here, <laughs> blah, blah blah blah. And dude, he's on fucking NBC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like kind of calling for that like the black people to like just start killing Jews. <laughs> <laughs> and then he like he like kind of mini Hitlered. And then it was like, oh, yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad. Chill, chill, chill. He went hard in the paint. Really? Yeah. Damn, like, I got to Apparently see that. the That's transcripts are, like, wild. I was hilarious. watching, I was listening to my Glenn Lowry show, and he brings up the fucking Al Sharpton thing, and he was like, how the fuck is this dude on TV? He's like, this shit was nuts when he went and did that. Look it up. I could be, I could be getting my signals crossed, but I, I'm pretty sure that happened with the Sharp Man. I hear you. He came in 
pretty much was like, let's fuck these Jews up. Chill. <laughs> That's Chill. what he's... Oh, yeah, I would say. I think, obviously, I think he'll sell out any club. Like, I think he crushes. I bet. I, I think bet Gary he, Owen crushes. But he slams, dude. I think Gary Owen rules, dude. But he might. I mean, dude, the fact that he's fucking... But... Hennessy and fucking... Uh, the Hennessy and Black Mild comment. That's just him, bro. Whoa. That's just him. What are you talking about? Anytime I watch a rap battle, dude, I fucking, uh, for sure. I mean, I need to publicly state, like, yo, I'm going to need some Hennessy and Black Mile for this Jeezy versus. So I'm saying, but he's, he's arranged his own personal reality in a way where he's just like, yeah, dude, nothing weird about this. This is just me. It's just like, how did, how did he get there? I mean, yeah, there's certain guys, like, Chet, Chet Hanks could pull that off. If Chet Hanks tweeted that, I'd be like, hilarious, sweet. True. He believes that. <laughs> yeah. I think he's 100% in on this. <laughs> True, you can't waver. Dude, yeah. Brittany was telling me she was listening to the radio, and uh, there was a commercial, and it was like it was on like Power 99 or something. And it was like, come on, y'all, the vaccine's almost here, and we need to stand up for our community. Sign up to get the va- to get literally like test like to have it like oh. tested. And I was like, she was like, dude, it was like, what the fuck, dude? It's like, damn, that sounds like, like that's fucked up. They're going on like Power 99, like, come on, man, stand up, be stand up for your community and. Get that first round of vaccines, y'all. Come on, and we can be, we can lead the change. It's like, dude, fucking Tuskegee. Mushroom? Yeah, I was just gonna say. Yeah, it's like, dude, how about you pick somebody else for that? Hey, y'all, come on. You know how it goes yeah. when we do fucking. <laughs> you know when America wants to experiment on drugs, <laughs> it's time for us to step up. <laughs> <laughs> on the ra- shamelessly on the radio, dude. It's like Man. they're trying to stick people with it. A lot of people are like, I'm not fucking taking these things. But I also talked to one of my other boys, and he was saying. Um, I was like, you, I was like, you get taking this vaccine. He was like, I'm gonna take it, bro. I was like, seriously. He was like, dude. I was like, I'm not, they rushed the fucking thing to market. He was like, that's because Trump was in office, dude, and he got it done in like two seconds. Yeah. Like, the Democrats would have taken five years for that shit. I'm like, damn, they got you too on this thing. Like, I fuck, mean, man. look, they might have me. You think you're gonna take it? I probably won't. I've never taken a vaccine. Well, you haven't since relapsed. I was a yeah, since yeah. I was a young boy. Since yeah. I was a young warthog. Yeah. <laughs> I'm nervous about it, dude. I don't know what the fuck's in it. It, it got here. I might have got a flu shot once. I had to get one, I feel before, like I got I had, one. before I had Maya. They were like, you got to get a flu shot. Psh, you but got one? 100, yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. But it, yeah, you got one? Psh. I know one of us is a vaxxer. I know one of us ain't. Yeah, well, I'm not getting the COVID one, and I'm not letting my daughter get the COVID one either. Are you kidding me, dude? Dude, I, I fucking had <laughs> You vax that bull? <laughs> you vax bull. More That's right. I'm more the weather guy here. You're weather and vax. vax. Dude, Two things Matt loves. Vaxes. vaxes and the weather. <laughs> you love fucking vaxes, dude. He's doing it for my daughter, dude. You got vax. Yeah, that's how they trick. They got to get, they find out what that's you what love they do. and they it's use it family pressure, you. man. Yeah. Dude, like try to go into a pediatrician and be like, I'm good on that one. They're going to be like, get the fuck out of my office. But they're going to, yeah. I think they're going to require the COVID vax. I think for a lot of things. For what? I think they're going to require it for like work and things like that. The vaccine? Yes. Dude, that's fucking nuts. I, yeah. That's nuts. Dude. I think businesses are going to require that. Like, that's, there's and then they're going to be like, well, it's a private business. They can have whatever they want. There's going to be a bunch of doctors that pop up that just hit people with a, you can go and be like, just give me the, the, the COVID paperwork. How the heck are you guys? But yeah, both you guys have been sending me that South South African guy, (laughs) I assume. If making me the villain in your story is what makes you feel better about yourself, I promise you that you have a lot of things you need to work on. You need some growth. You need some self-healing. And you need a lot of self love. Yeah. He's so fucking funny. He, it's he's he's hilarious. locked on to it the way you locked on it to cat the cat videos. Cat videos are the black cat is on the field. The first touch is exceptional. The movement is outstanding. The black cat lies through. Brilliant! Brilliant goal! I can't get enough of this guy. Did Every you, 10 minutes. You, like, Look I, at this I hate him. Did I send you the one with the Prince <laughs> Harry? Him. Prince yes. Harry gave up a whole yes. nation for his girlfriend. Prince Harry left a whole country for his woman. So don't you dare settle for someone who can't even give you the bed anymore. <laughs> yeah. Don't you dare settle for anything than total yeah. commitment. His comments are just, it's just ladies being like, oh my God, finally a nice guy. <laughs> I know. I know. He just, it's, it's them doing gore instead of like hot guys being, you know. Pedro Salinas, gorgeous. Hello, gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just, it's well, just fucking girls being like, gorgeous. it's about time, guys, stand up. Let's <laughs> run. <laughs> <laughs> 
but he's also like he's it's so transparent uh, like what him? he's going through like there'll be one where he's like he's like you fuck with my family you fuck with me mess with me i'll let karma do its job but mess with the ones i love i'll become karma and then the next one will be like Listen, don't just ghost me. Don't. <laughs> it's just like, Dude, if you ghost just me, I ghost you. You ghost me, I ghost you. You show no interest, I show no effort. You put me second, I'll put you last. Yeah. Yeah, you left me on red, I leave you yeah, on red. Like, you'll tell when my love's gone. Yeah. He's like, if I don't reply immediately, <laughs> Dude, I've already He's wearing just on. like a Bart Simpson hoodie. There's like I Bart Simpson that, on That's a, apparently like an $800 shirt from Balenciaga. Sure. <laughs> sure. Someone told me that and I went, what the hell? <laughs> dude, he's a sociopath who just reads bumper stickers and like they're powerful yeah. and then walks off. It's like, dude, what I mean, I've gone on to watch his YouTube vlog and I think it's very illuminating. Yeah. Yeah. He's just yeah. a hot, dumb guy. If we're dating, vibing, or seeing each other, you can have my passwords. <laughs> He's a hot, dumb guy who's plugged into a thing, and it's just like... It's all you can do these days is if you get, like, you got to get super jacked. Baby, don't hurt me. And then you can just walk around and put on, like, cool kid clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and say something stupid. Yeah, yeah. He's got like five hundred thousand like, yeah. followers. It's, high, it's a highly profitable endeavor. He's a consultant. He's I consultant. actually love girls, <laughs> <laughs> and if you were with me, I would be nice to you, and I would never be mean. And I've I'm got like, a couple yes. of these. There's versions of it that is like Western guys, like Ooh. cowboys. Oh, hot oh cowboys. yeah, yeah I guys remember this like guy. cowboy hats. Yeah, yeah. Like. Yeah, I mean it's it's like the what I would uh, wear on my first date with you. It's a cowboy guy. It's a Christian cowboy. Just right? riding, yeah, riding a, a horse. Cowboy. The romance yeah. novels for the modern age.